Well, this week on Modern Broadcast... Oh no, I just blue screened my computer. Great. Hello and welcome to Modern Broadcast. Now let's talk about some retro handheld gaming. The PlayStation Vita was released in Japan December of 2011, with an international release a few months later in 2012. Sony went all out on their newest handheld, which featured an OLED screen, front and rear cameras, responsive controls, and touchscreen interactions. Despite its impressive stats, however, the device was quickly abandoned by Sony and third-party developers. Support was officially discontinued in 2019, and it seemed that the Vita was doomed to fall in disuse and obscurity. Instead, it turned into a fan favorite. Over the years, the Vita has occurred a massive cult following within the homebrew scene. Its versatility and graphic capabilities make it an excellent emulator and give it new life beyond what Sony first envisioned. Viva la Vita! So things that we'll need for this tutorial is obviously you're going to need the PlayStation Vita console, an official Sony memory card, a USB power cable, your PlayStation Network ID, and a PC. You can also get an SD to Vita and micro SD card, uh, but those are optional. For this video, I'm going to be using my second generation Vita. However, if you have the first generation model, you can follow these exact steps as the process is exactly the same. Alright, let's uh, kick things off on PC here. We'll need to download two files from GitHub. I'll have links in the description down below. The first file is called hencore. Down here at the bottom, we'll click the .7z file uh, and we'll download that. The next file that we'll need is called Vita Deploy. So we'll scroll down here and download the .zip file. Once those have been downloaded, we have them here on the desktop. I'm going to move them to this Vita mod folder that I made for this video. Once inside here, we need to right click on the 7-zip folder and extract it to make its own folder. Once that's complete, we can now delete the 7-zip file. And all we want to do with the second one is just drag and drop the Vita Deploy zip folder into that newly created folder. Let's go ahead and open that up. And we see that we have a .exe file. Let's go ahead and open that. And be sure to check the box that says trim. Then you wanna click the little arrow on the right and check Vita deploy. Once that's done, let's head over to our Vita and get things ready for transfer. I've done a complete factory reset on my Vita for this video. The first thing that I want to do is boot it up for the first time and go through the setup process. Be sure to sign into your PlayStation account when prompted. I'm going to open up my settings here and scroll down to system. It looks like I'm currently on the newest firmware, which is 3.73. Now that I did the first time boot up, I shut down the system and I'm going to install our Sony official memory card. These memory cards are proprietary and rather expensive. To install the memory card, we'll grab the device, flip it up so the bottom is facing us, and it's just to the right of the headphone jack. Once you get the little door open, you're going to take the memory card and just put it in there and push down and it will stay in. Getting the Vita ready for transfers is incredibly easy. What we want to do is go to the Content Manager, click on Copy, push down to select PC. We're going to do this method via USB. Then I'll prompt for you to connect a USB cable into the Vita and the PC. Once we do that, we need to go back to our PC and we see now it has Let's Go. If we click on that, it will start its process. A few things to note with the software. If your Vita is not recognized by your PC or vice versa, you'll need to install the QCMA. 
I'll have a link in the description below, but only do this if your Vita is not being recognized. Secondly, you may get a failure to unpack bittersmile.pkg like I did. To fix this, do not unplug the Vita from your computer. I did this and blue screened my computer and lost about 30 minutes of footage. Oh no, I just blue screened my computer. Great. Instead, run the .exe file in compatibility mode for Windows 7. Great, now that it's done, it looks like it has some instructions for us to follow back on our Vita. Let's click on PC to Vita, Applications, PS Vita, and here are VPKs. So let's go ahead and check both of these and then click on Copy. Once that's finished, we can go back to the home screen, scroll down and we now have H Encore and Vita Deploy on our home screen. Our Vita isn't hacked just yet though. We need to open up Encore first. Once we click open here, it's gonna say that we can't use trophies. We're gonna say yes. And then it's gonna close and reopen. Once this boots up, we can press exit and it'll install the rest. Congratulations, you've now officially hacked your Vita. We can confirm this by going to settings and we now see we have a Hinkaku tab. Let's open that up and let's enable homebrew and check the spoofed version. We wanna make sure it says 3.73. Now you could leave your Vita like this. However, you would always have to reopen H Encore for your Vita to be hacked every time it reboots. So let's go down to Vita deploy and what we're gonna do is we're going to install a different OS. And you'll see here, it's a quick 3.65 install, which is older than the version we currently have, but it allows for a permanent hack. This process does take some time and we'll have on-screen prompts when you need to push X to continue. All right, four minutes later and it's done. So it says here, do you want to downgrade, push X to continue, or the right bumper to exit? Uh, we do want to downgrade. So let's go ahead and push X. We then are greeted with a warning that the change that we're about to make is permanent, and there's always a chance of bricking your unit. It will auto continue in 20 seconds. Again, we're greeted with push X to continue or push right bumper to exit. I'm gonna push X and it's gonna start the downgrade. Once the downgrade is complete, it's gonna auto reboot. And if we check the settings, we can see that we are now officially on 3.65. Let's go ahead and scroll down to Vita deploy and grab a few essentials that we need. If we scroll down, we can see App Downloader. And we are going to want to install Vita Shell, the Homebrew Browser, this version of Enzo, which is ITLS, Adrenaline, PKGJ, and I think that's good enough for now. So let's download the selected apps. Once that's done, it's gonna open them up in a file manager and we're just gonna wanna scroll down and start installing these. All right, once that's done, let's go ahead and close this and here are our new apps. So let's open up the ITLS, which looks like a website. This will be another permanent hack that we do to our Vita. And once in here, we're going to want to install the full package. Installing Enzo makes it so we don't have to open up Encore every single time we reboot our system. It's just going to be permanently hacked where we can use our homebrew software, emulators, games, etc. 
I think this is a great stopping point for the Vita hacking video as your system is now hacked mess around uh, a couple quick notes is that the Vita homebrew browser uh, takes like five minutes to actually boot up so if you get a black screen for a long time that is normal um, just give it a few and eventually it does come up thank you so much for watching if you like this video please consider leaving a like and subscribe let me know in the comments below what kind of videos you want to see Have a good week, everyone, and take care.